The meeting is called to order for the special city council meeting May 4th, 2016. Madam Clerk, the pledge, please. Councilman Hewitt, present. Councilman Johnston, present. Councilman Wheeler, present. Mayor Maselli, present. Police Chief Walker, yeah. Fire Chief St. Cyr, present. City Attorney Burris, present. and Finance Director Linda Lulu, or City CPA. City CPA. Um, she just told me I did today. Got it. Good afternoon, everyone. In an effort to maintain order and ensure city business is addressed and conduct these proceedings with the dignity that they deserve, I will ask all present to refrain from any disruptive outbursts, comments, and to ask everyone to mind their manners. Any, dis any disruptions will be handled with by a simple asking um, either to uh, have you leave the chambers or we'll handle it with a recess. I also wanted to announce to the council I will be re reviewing appointments for planning and zoning board and the Board of Adjustment and Appeals. I will ask the council to please submit names uh, that they would like to have me consider by March, uh, I'm sorry, Friday, May 13, 2016. Address the council. We will now open to address the council. Anyone wishing to speak, please come up to the mic uh, to the right, and you will have three minutes to speak. Uh, we are looking into getting a timer so everyone can see the time and all be on the same page. May Jean Casimir, Marty, she still can't hear. Is it on? It's on. It's on. Can you all hear? Okay. May Jean Casney, 46 Oak Avenue, Harahan, Louisiana. The last council meeting was a total disgrace. Screaming and shouting doesn't make you right, it just makes you loud. That type of behavior does not belong in the city council chamber. Making fools of yourselves also gives the city a black eye. The city has real business to take care of like passing the budget, June the 30th is fast approaching and the budget needs to be adopted before then. Ms. Lulu explained the budget line by line and answered all 35 questions you sent her. What's left to debate? There is no fat in the budget. No one and no department is getting special treatment. So what's the problem? Like the mayor said at the meeting, she is here to stay. Sorry. I think the mayor switched my mic to hers. <laughs> so work with her instead of against her, and the city will prosper. Thank you. Hello, John Reen, 3 Ren Pass. Um, we are uh, addressing the sand issue again. Uh, what we want uh, the citizens to report to the DEQ any dump trucks without covers any sand blowing into the community, any sand on roadways and ramps, any effect from sand, vibration, noise, odors, and flies. The phone number, and thank the City Hall and the Mayor for putting out the um, DEQ phone numbers, 225-219-3640. Uh, uh, the hotline to DEQ is 225-342-1234, and Daniel Odom is uh, 504 736-7713. Uh, report to the Harahan Police Department and Jefferson Parish Police Department any speeding dump trucks on Riverside Drive and the River Road or dump trucks without covers on or dump trucks not stopping at the stop sign at the River Road and the ramp. Report any dump trucks on residential streets including Hickory Avenue. There is a weight limit of five tons. The airport project has begun I think last Wednesday. Uh, large 18-wheel dump trucks are running at night near Hickory Avenue. 
uh, report any noise and activity during night that disturbs the community to the police department. The sand pit between Oak Avenue and Wren Pass is being filled. We're concerned about the sand being pumped out of the river and what the sand contains that can be harmful to the residents of Harahan. We need Harahan government and local government officials to address testing of the sand to see what is in the sand and the size and the amount of the particles coming into the community. We need the EPA to set up continuous monitors to make sure the particulates are controlled. We need to remember that even the sand that we cannot see can affect our health. We need all material stockpiles to be watered as stated by the DEQ in the Louisiana Administrative Code, LAC 33 III 1305A2. All reasonable precautions shall be taken to prevent particulate matter from being airborne. These precautions shall include, but shall not be limited to the following. Application of asphalt, oil, water, or suitable chemicals on dirt roads, material stockpiles, and other services which can give rise to airborne dust. The uh, next uh, uh, Louisiana Administrative Code 7, uh, all reasonable precautions shall be taken to prevent particulate matter from becoming airborne. These particulate precautions shall include, but shall not be limited to the following. The prompt removal of earth or other materials from paved streets onto which the earth or other material has been transported by trucks or earth moving equipment. Erosion by water or other means. We need the DEQ to enforce the Louisiana Administrative Code to water stockpiles. I think it went out. <laughs> Thank you. I just told that to. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, turn it down. Oh, we can't do that? Well, I can, mm -hmm. but he has on his phone. Uh, Makes it easy. AC well, nobody had to get it up yet. <laughs> pool guy. Been having me in pool guy. Okay. My name is Evelyn Ream. I live at Three Run Pass. We should not have to get up month after month at every meeting and talk about the sand, vibrations, noise, flies, and odors from the badger. Give our request and continue to see the problem exists. We continue to tell this problem to the city of Harry and the mayor and the city council and wait until the next meeting to repeat ourselves. The residents need your help. We are not the first people who have addressed the sand issue. Residents have addressed it before us in 2013 and several years before that, but saw nothing happening and gave up. The residents of Harahan need the mayor to continue to trust all the responsible agencies given wood materials permits, such as the Corps of Engineers, East Jefferson Levy District, Agriculture and Forestry Department, DEQ and Coastal Management, and to require all agencies to check on wood materials responsibility to the permits they are giving. Also for the mayor to actively enforce our own ordinance of 1333 addressing the sand batcher activity affecting the residents. The residents of Harahan need the council members to address the sand batcher problems affecting the community and all the responsible agencies. We do not need another ordinance. We can't even get the one that we have in place to be enforced. Um, we encourage the mayor and the city council members to assist the residents to, to re our, our request to wood materials to close all the openings of burns and trees, close the sand road behind the levee, plant grass, move the road back to the back, and stall green grates for the dump trucks, water stockpiles, DQ states in the LAC, LAC to remove sand from the ramp in the Riverside Drive, EPA to set up monitors to monitor the sand and to test the sand from the river. We also are very disappointed that Wood had made a uh, letter to the DAQ when he had an NOD stating that he would close the berms. He also put on that letter a, a diagram of how he would close those berms. Okay. Since he got released of his NOD, he broke the berm. That was very discouraging to, to us as residents to see that progress and then see it break. That was very discouraging. Um, we met with Wood and the, at the January meeting. He said he could do what we asked, but he needed the court's permission. We sent him an email asking him to ask the court for permission. We met with the court last week, week for less, and they said that they had not got a request from him to move the road, but they said if he requested to move the road, that they would assist him in that in any way that they could. So we are now asking the council and the mayor to please help the residents. We should not have to have our quality of life taken. We should not have sand all over our homes, all over our cars, all over everything. We should be able to coexist 
with this company. This company should be able to do their business, close up all their openings, access the pits from the back, water their stockpiles, put up some monitors for our own health and well-being, and then we can exist as a community. And we can have what we pay so hard to have, and that's our homes. Thank you very much. Darlene Schwartz, I live over on Sedgefield Drive. I'm here to speak as a citizen of Harahan. Um, the last council meeting that took place, uh, I was present when Mr. Kevin Johnson um, did his presentation. And I wanted to address the council then, but it adjourned and I didn't have the opportunity to do so. I'm a criminal investigator by background and um, I believe in, in, in relaying facts. And since he was here doing his presentation, I, I think it's only fair for the council, the mayor, and the citizens to know of some statements that Mr. Kevin Johnson made multiple times to multiple people, um, multiple occasions up until pretty much the day he left employment with the city of Harahan. The day after the council meeting when he stood over there and um, came into work, he expressed how he felt harassed, how upset he was with the way he had been treated by um, the Reemses who are here present and also by Miss Dana and Miss Carrie. Um, I'm not here for a popularity contest but I feel since he had to say what he had to say, it's only fair that everybody knows that he had a lot of verbal statements to say, again, up until the day he left. Unsolicited, uh, nobody asked for him, really. When the meeting was over, for me it was over. Um, but anyhow, um, again, he felt harassed. He said he was invited to the meeting. He felt like he was set up. He had never been treated that way in his entire professional career. He never wanted to come back and address the council meeting again. He felt like his professional reputation was going to be ruined. Um, again, on and on and on and on. He said a lot of different things. I want to remain within my three-minute time limit, but I felt like it was only fair, again, just to kind of relay what Mr. Kevin said. Nothing against him. Nothing against any of the council, nothing against the mayor, but that's, that's what I heard, and so did multiple other people on multiple occasions. Thank you for the opportunity. Hi, I'm Sarah Wood Ham, and I represent my family business, Wood Materials, the Sand Pits. And um, I wanted to tell everybody that we do care about the community, and we do want to be good neighbors. And Mrs. Reams, you are right. There's no reason why we cannot coexist. You are so right. We've been um, doing business there for 35 years, and we, and we really want to do it for 35 more in a good way. And, um, and I want to make myself available to you all tonight to be the voice of our family business. And um, I invite people to come over and talk with me and discuss in person the progress we've made. I want to hear your concerns. And I don't really know how to go about doing it. I have business cards <laughs> I can pass out. But um, I, I just wanted to just say, if you have any questions, I just want to be available. And um, thank you. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, do you mind just getting a few of her cards? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I wish that this purpose at this mic would be to sing a beautiful song, but it isn't. It's one of evil and distress in my life, and I'm not looking for cry, people to cry and any of that, but I have a very, very sick son. <laughs> I'm forbidden to see him because they invented a story at St. Joseph. Can you imagine a saint in that building? That I beat my son while he, he was there. I was there every day 
because I worried about him. He needed me to make sure that he was taken care of. For one thing, I had to make sure that he had clothes to wear because most of the time they were stolen. Things like that, and I'm not trying to be evil in my words, but I was reported as, ha as having beaten my son, who I love more than life. I've been taking care of him for three years now. He's been in and out of the hospital, and he can't walk, and he's been in need of a place to stay until we get him back on his feet. And that I'm working on. However, just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can. I don't want to. I was called into an office 30 minutes after I registered at St. Joseph's to put my son in there for assistance. And these were the words. Don't you want to go someplace else? Maybe we can help you find another place, another place to take your son. I stood in amazement. And then I may not be a college graduate, did no, I didn't go to Harvard and all of that, but I went to the School of Common Sense. And I said, something's wrong here. What in the world is she, what, what, what is, followed me all over, asked me to leave, gave me certain days that I could go there, the hours that I could visit my son. Ladies and gentlemen, in my life, I've never, never experienced anything like this. The love of my son had me going there every day because he needed me. As it is today, the phone rings constantly, Mama, please get me, I need you, I need you. And, um, I, I suffered shackles on my hand and was taken to the West Bank and put in a cell. I can't, I, the only thing that I can think of that pleases me is that my angel mother and father weren't here to even witness this. Can I ask for a motion to give Ms. Penny extended time, please? Pardon? Motion. Motion. I have a motion by De Councilman Hewitt, seconded by Councilman Bowie. Um, I, for an am I saying I should stop talking? All, Just Pardon? All, you can Just all, uh, all agree? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I don't want to do anything. You know, what's so disturbing is the love I have for all of you. Harahan, when I moved, I was in New Orleans, and my mother and family lived here. My brother Salantini was a chief in Kenner, and I wanted to be with my family. I moved from New Orleans back here, built a home in, in uh, what's it, where, where, on Dosha Drive. The disappointment is in the evil that's in the hearts of people that we have to tolerate when this place needs to be closed. People are there, half of the little ladies, they need to go to the bathroom and they're begging you for help. This is what they, why they didn't want me. They knew that I was able to pick up things there. It, it, not that I was going to go out in the street and yell it out, but I was smart enough to know what was happening. This place, it was operated, and all I had was somebody. They had a, a bodyguard everywhere I went. What I did is I would pass a little lady, God bless her, and she would be having trouble in her wheelchair. And I would help her, and I'd say, God bless you, darling. I was told not to talk to them. Well, I'm going to say God bless everybody every day of my life that God gives me a voice and to express his love. That's what I promised him the day I came from my mother's womb. I don't want to seem, I, I just don't know what to do. I'm sad because I can't see my son. They have a, 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 some kind of a, 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 a civil deal that I can't see him for six months. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I can't afford the lawyers that it takes to unwind these things. I've been paying for doctor bills long enough. 
And this is what it takes, another lawyer to go in there. And, and this case was not even investigated when they said, I hit my son. Because you know what? <laughs> Never in my life, I love this boy so much. He, his father died at, when he was one month old, and I raised him alone with a lot of love. And then I come to Harahan, the city of kindness and goodness and caring. And, and you know what? I loved it. I just thought it was wonderful. Only to find out the disappointment when I see what's been going on. And I'm begging people, do something about it. Now I have to, I don't know how to get, I, I need to see my son. I can't. I need to get him back in Kenner. I found a place for him. But I don't, I, I'll tell everybody. No, maybe I better not. I don't want to be, I don't want to be cruel. But St. Joseph's not the place for anyone if you want help and love and caring. Believe me. It's distress, hatred, ugliness. And then I was accused of, of I don't even know the words to use, of molest, what's the word, the, of doing something to an office and molest, the molest, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know, I hear this after. I happen to have so much respect for the police department all over the world. I remember approaching father a couple of years ago to give a march and let's raise money to protect these people. I love them so much. And my fear for the evil out there of hurting them. And then they tell me, I, I, I don't even know the word you, you use. It just, uh, <coughs> they said I, 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 was, I did something to the policeman. I don't even know his name, I know his face. And I'll always remember him because he gave me a scar right here with the shackles. Left me in a room for two hours, and I'm begging for help for a ladies' room. Then they ship me to the West Bank and put me in a cell. I'm not wanting you to cry and say, poor Penny. You know what I want? I want you to think about it. And before you make any moves in your decisions, and where to be when you have a sick person. Think about it, because believe me. Anyway, I'm working on it. I've got to get him in, 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 in Kenner. I have a place I'm looking at there. But I can't get him, because they have a condition that I can't see him for six months. Now, isn't that something? I have a sick son, and I can't see him. And he has a sick mother who's really finding it very difficult to get through every day. I, um, I have a lot of other things to say, but you know what? I want to thank you all for, for, for being here tonight. I know that there's a lot to be said and done to help the people in Harahan, and I don't want to be an obstacle in the way. But I do want you all to know I'm totally embarrassed as to what they did to my reputation, fingerprinting me. Can you believe it? My brother Sal would have, <laughs> oh God. Did anybody know him? <laughs> believe me, that would have never happened. But ladies and friends and everyone, thank you very much for your attention. And God bless each and every one of you but I plan on doing as much as I can if I have to pass a lawsuit. I don't want any money. If I got any, I'll donate it to the children. I don't want money. I want them to clean that place up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Amanda. Good evening. Remy Donnelly, Council for Wood Materials. Just Quick question whether or not to, to address this now, but I know there was a proposed ordinance on the, the agenda, and is that still some a matter that's going to be decided tonight or, or, or a public hearing on that matter tonight? I believe it's on planning and zoning tonight at 730, correct? So that, that will not be addressed in this meeting? I, I know. 
Okay. Yeah, well, I had asked the city attorney if it had to go to planning and zoning prior to us approving it and voting on it. So it should be deferred. And the, okay. the answer was um, no, but we needed their recommendation. So I'm really not sure. Maybe Mr. Beerus could help us. Okay. It so does the, need to go to planning and zoning. It's off the agenda. It's not on this agenda. Okay, okay. Well, well, it, it, it is, is on the agenda. Well, for, for, at 7.30. At 730. Okay, thank it you. It does need to go to planning and zoning. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Wheeler. I live at 450 Berg. I'm also a uh, board member of Riverside Country Club here in Harahan. I would like to let everyone know that Riverside is opening back up for the summer this Friday, May 6th at 5 p.m. The pool uh, will open along with our new resurface tennis courts. Uh, we are excited to have our current members and any new members come out and celebrate this Mother's Day weekend at the club. For anyone interested in becoming a member, we will host our annual open house on Saturday, May 21st from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. The open house is free to any adults and families who want to come swim, play tennis, and uh, check out our facilities. Riverside always welcomes new members. So if anyone's interested in becoming a member, get, please give us a call at 504-737-0671 or visit our website at www.rscountryclub.com. Thank you. Thank you. We will now close address the council. Approval of the minutes. Reading of the minutes of the special meeting on March 10th. Do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of the special meeting on March 10th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Yay. Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Reading of the minutes of the council meeting on March 17th. Do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Approval of the council meeting minutes on March 17th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. We have a motion by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. And reading of the minutes of the special meeting on March 31st. Do I have a motion to dispense with the readings of the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Approval of the special meeting minutes on March 31st. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson. Second by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Communications. The Board of Adjustments and Appeals did not meet in March. And reading of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on April 6. Do I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston. Seconded by Councilman ba Benton. All in favor? Yay. Yay. We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on April 6. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Councilman Benton. All in favor? Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Resolutions. Let's see. The following resolution was offered by Councilman. Who would like to offer this one? Is it unanimous? unanimous? Yeah. 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 Okay. A resolution authorizing Mayor Tina Maselli to enter into a professional services agreement for and on behalf of the City of Harahan, Louisiana, with the Louisiana Municipal Advisory and Technical Services Bureau to assist in the collection of fees and delinquent property taxes, including but not limited to tax sales. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to speak to this resolution? Mary Jean Casanay, 46 Oak Avenue, Harahan, Louisiana. The mayor presented a cooperative endeavor agreement with the sheriff's office to collect our taxes and hold a tax sale for $2 a parcel. The council turned it down, saying that they didn't want the outcome to outsource this job, stating that the people of Harahan like to come to City Hall to pay their taxes. What has changed? How much will Lamotts be charging? And how much of the back taxes have been collected so far? And how many people still owe back taxes? I like these questions answered. 
before you vote. Thank you. Uh, off my old packet, yes. Uh, off the one one before we um, oh, yeah, I have, have council discussion, um, Madam Clerk, City Tax Collector, do you have any comments that you would like to give forth on this resolution? No, ma'am. I can address what we've done as far as taxes. Uh, we have been ver vigorously uh, collecting taxes when we took office. The legislative auditor identified $163,475 of uncollected taxes from 1997 to uh, 2014. I am, when we looked at it more specifically, 115,000 of the uncollected ad valorem taxes were between 2008 and 2014. So the bulk of it was in a small amount of years, in six years. I am proud to announce that due to the hard work of our employees, we have collected over $120,000 of our past debt. I have a lot of people to thank as, uh, about going about collecting these taxes. We've had individuals go in their personal cars, leave messages, knock on doors, and work with people to collect taxes. Although collecting the final portion may be difficult because usually the last parts are the more difficult um, collections. It may be due to secessions, et cetera. Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to collect. So I'm very proud of, of where we've come. Um, and I'm proud to also report that all we have left for 2015 are about 20, one twenty thousand dollars of uncollected taxes so we have broken a trajectory that i to was told by officials that couldn't be uh changed they said it is very rare for the city to bend that curve of uh tax collection they expected it to keep creeping up some so this was a major feat for the city and major um good effort to put toward our deficit and to make sure that we deliver the services that our citizens deserve. Does anybody want to? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Mayor Mastella, you and I met with Judge Palmer from UMass about a year ago regarding this resolution. And UMass brought it forth, and the city at the time was going to engage UMass, and then there was an amended resolution that came out. Council Member. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hello? I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, so initially there was a resolution that came out about a year ago engaging Lamatt's services. Um, Mr. Palmer met with us, I believe it was almost four hours, the, the meeting was quite lengthy. He went on to say that there would be no charge to the city of Harahan if Lamatt's took over the service. Ms. Najin, I know you asked that. Um, then the resolution got amended and it took out the word Lamatt's and said that the city or the mayor could enter into an agreement with any entity that she's, you know, so now we're back to Lamatz again. So I guess I'm wondering, so we were at Lamatz a year ago. We could have engaged Lamatz at that time. The resolution was changed to any public or private entity. Now we're back to Lamatz again. Is Lamatz agreement still that there is no charge to the city for their services? Uh, I'd like to just go back. In March of 2015, Councilman Wheeler and I met with um, Mr. Palmer. Palmer. Yeah, thank you. I'm remembering his first name, Mr. Cliff Palmer. Palmer. Um, the resolution was not put forth by a council member. There was discussion. It could have been put up as is. It could have been redesigned somewhat to make us look at, so that the city could look at a number of different companies or entities in order to collect back taxes so that we could weigh the pros and cons. But that option never appeared on the, uh, the city council agenda. That is a legislative duty, for the most part, to offer legislation of resolution and ordinances. When that did not proceed, that um, we looked into other options. The costs associated with LAMATS are delineated in the resolution. They are costs that are passed on to um, the taxpayer. Right. The question was, is the city being charged for no. LAMATS? Okay. Not to so, Ms. Mayjean, the city will not be charged if LAMATS does our tax collection. 
Do I have any, any yeah. other? Yeah, I just wanted to say that when we originally tried to get this passed, the council pushed back against it and wouldn't consider it. And so we did change it strictly that we could consider other people. And we tried to bring Jefferson Parish into it. We tried to bring Jefferson Parish into it, and um, the council pushed, I mean, <laughs> They would not allow it. They said we don't have, we don't hold tax sales in this city. We, you know, we don't collect delinquent property taxes. We just don't do that. And Ms. Hewitt accused me of, uh, because I supported it, that I was that was my first move in trying to unincorporate the city. So, and the good thing about Jefferson Parish compared to Lamatt is that no, Lamatt doesn't charge the city anything, but it charges the residents. So the, the price that we would have paid or that residents would have paid for the Jefferson Parish um, system would have been much less than if had, had than the Lamat system. So I don't, am I, does that make sense? And the cost also included the entire bringing in the tax rolls, printing the tax rolls, mailing out the tax rolls, doing all the notices, doing everything for $2 a parcel. But I am just... I'm going to be very honest. I am grateful that this resolution is here. We have to follow state law. This is one option in order to be able to follow state law. Um, I, it took a long time to get here. I'm just glad that we have uh, before us an opportunity uh, yet again to consider a path in order to collect our uncollected taxes. Would anyone else like to speak to this issue? Has Lamat supplied you with their costs? Are they the, are they the same cost that it was mm -hmm. a year ago? Okay. We will now proceed with the vote. All in favor of the resolution? Yay. 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 Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Resolution passes. Ordinances for approval. Uh, proposed ordinance number 2016-1. An ordinance adopting the annual budget of revenue and expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2016 for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. And this, the following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Benton and seconded by Councilman Johnston. We will now open up to public hearing to discuss this uh, ordinance in particular. Anyone wishing to address the ordinance, please step forward. If we have no one here wishing to discuss the ordinance, we will now close address the council. Prior to entering into um, council discussion, I would like to ask Ms. Linda Lulu, the city CPA, to come up to the microphone and, or she can do it from her seat and um, make, make a few short remarks. Um, I had comments about the different line items that the council had wanted to change from Ms. our Linda, original. Would you make sure you're very soft on your voice? Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, prior to discussing the proposed changes to the 2016 budget, I would like to remind everyone where we stand today as we continue to operate the city without a budget in place. Since we have no adopted budget by law, we are required to utilize 50% of the 2015 year's budget as our guideline. We've been very sensitive to this and are comparing invoices to the 50% we are allowed to spend for each line item. The city had already cut spending across the board beginning with the 2015 administration, and we were having no problems with staying within this 50% threshold of expenses until today. This morning, we received an invoice for the semi-annual repayment of the 2006 sales tax bond, which totals 190,000 worth of principal and is due by June 1st. The city physically has the funds to make this payment, but is unable to do so and remain beneath the 50% threshold. I spoke to Mr. Hugh Martin of Foley and Judell today to ask what it would mean to the city should we not make this payment. He stated that not paying the 2006 bond would constitute a default by the city and it would have serious repercussions. First off, the city would be reported to the State Bond Commission, and this is at a time when we are requesting the Bond Commission to consider our application to refinance the 2007 bond and save the city $83,000. Additionally, being reported to the bond commission would greatly reduce our likelihood of being able to receive any new bonds in the future. Secondly, being reported for default will cause the state to scrutinize the city and could lead to the city being operated 
under the state supervision, much like a conservatorship. So I ask on behalf of the city that these dire consequences be kept in mind and that a budget be adopted now. Now I'd like to go over the proposed changes to the city's budget. Underneath non-departmental, the accounting and maintenance contracts line, the proposed budget was $31,440. The proposed adjustment was $25,000. This is a decrease of $6,440. Prior year's actual was approximately $29,000. This line item is for Tyler Technologies, which is the computer system used by the city. The city has not added any modules to the computer system, but there are annual increases, and the proposed budget of 31440 takes this increase into consideration. In order for the city to meet proposed changes of $29,000 less, modules would have to be removed. To decrease by this amount, two of the more expensive modules, such as the core financial processing and payroll, or many of the less expensive modules, such as cash collections, business licenses, and fixed assets, would have to be canceled. Second line was legal fees lawsuits. Proposed budget, 50000 Proposed adjustment, 40000 which is a decrease of 10. Prior year's actual was 23290 However, the amount spent in 2014 was 67912 and in 2013, it was $89,424. 2013 seems low considering the average payout is of $60,000 over the last three years and the fact that the city is currently involved in four litigations, each of which has the maximum possible payout of $50,000. I confirmed last week that one individual is definitely going to court as opposed to settling, so the city's payout will likely be higher. Third, auditing. Proposed budget is $45,500. Proposed adjustment, $28,000. Decrease, $17,500. Prior year's actual was $28,000. This increase in this line item is twofold. Postal weight in Netterville's audit fee was increased this year to $35,000, so at the least, this line must cover their fees. This contract was signed in January 2016 by Mr. Johnson as the mayor pro tem and I'd given the signed contract to the council for review at the last budget meeting, so I'm not sure I understand how the city could underpay a signed co auditing contract, and the audit is currently underway. The additional 10500 was an estimate to hire a professional to assist with the audit of occupational license taxes owed to the city over the past three years. Research through our systems has shown that collections are down and that known businesses have failed to remit any occupational license tax. A review of those company sales tax reporting as compared to their license remittance, if any, is necessary in order for the city to recoup those monies and further decrease the deficit. The regular rate for occupational license tax auditor is $65 an hour, and at $10,500, that would provide for approximately 162 hours of work. Decreasing the auditing line item by $10,500 would negate the city's ability to find and collect monies that rightfully belong to the city. And an important point to consider is just by finding one or two companies under remitting would recoup the cost of hiding, hiring such an auditor. The administration, line item legal advertising. The proposed budget, 6,100. Proposed adjustment, 4,750. A decrease of 1,350. Prior year's actual was $5,885 prior year's budget was 4750 Legal advertising encompasses all of the public notices the city has to give to the public regarding planning and zoning, appeals board, council meetings, and proposed budgets. The number of meetings had increased last year, causing the city to go over budget in this line item. Thus far, the number of council meetings have been more than once a month due to the special meetings being held to discuss the budget, bond refinancing, and millage. Rather than decreasing this line to last year's budget, I would recommend implementing it to at least last year's actual. Thus far in 2016, the city has spent $1,167 on legal advertising. Notary. Proposed budget 1500 proposed adjustment zero, decrease of 1500 This is a new line item this year, as this is a new expense which will be incurred. It is my understanding that under previous administrations, other individuals on the premises were notaries and could perform these services for free. Our city attorney is not located on premise, and when things must be notarized, such as certain contracts, the city will have to seek a local notary out. Thus far in 2016, the city has spent $15 on notary services. 
salaries, proposed budget 2,224,000, I'm sorry, $224,680. Proposed adjustment 207,000 to decrease a $17,680. Prior year's actual was $148,880 plus the 63,200 mayor salary which had been moved to this line item which equals $212,080. The council's proposed figure was calculated using the average of salaries over the past three years, which is 140,000, plus an incorrect salary amount of the mayor of 67,000. Starting with an average of pay over three years is an irrelevant place to begin for salaries. Last year's pay plus any changes in pay is where we should start. By including older years, the 7,000 increase in the city clerk's pay implemented for prior Mayor Mosca and effective during this administration must be considered. An additional change is one of the part-time clerk. Her hourly rate has remained unchanged, but she has been working more hours, especially now as the administrative staff has been hard at collecting the $163 of delinquent property tax as identified by the Louisiana Auditor. Um, currently, I looked up this morning, Mayor, the city collected 145,000. Oh, thank you. Or 89 percent of this amount, and the extra manpower is sorely needed. Mm -hmm. One final point regarding prior year salary figures: there was a gentleman who was paid as a consultant and did not receive a salary, but was paid approximately 30,000 a year to do work for the city that rightfully belongs in the administration salary section. If we leave this line item at the requested 224,680, the city is still spending less in administrative salaries than it did in 2014. Court, revenue account court fines. The proposed budget is $259,000. Proposed adjustment is $192,000. I, I put the 2015 budget since no amount was given in the email as to what line item to put there. That gives us a decrease of 67,000. Prior year's actual was $183,822. Revenues have continued to decrease at an annual decline of over 20% each year since 2013. As stated in the council meeting last March, the clerk of court had investigated and discovered that prior to May 2014, tickets were closed with no attachments due to allowing the prescription to expire. During the period September 2012 through May 2015, approximately 205,000 worth of bond attachments were expired and therefore was lost revenue. Now the proper attachment procedures have begun and the backlog cleared, it is reasonable to expect monies received from bonds to increase. When the police officers then pick up persons on attachments, we will collect the bond money, a court date will be set, and fines to be paid, resulting in the estimated revenue that we thought would be $67,000 more than last year. Currently, we have collected $72,000 of court fine, which is 40% of the 2015 budget. Training and education. Proposed budget, 4600 Proposed adjustment, 1000 Decrease of 5000 That didn't work. 3,600, I'm sorry. This line item consists of the city signed contract with Thompson Reuters for their Westlaw package, which is $354.20 a month, which totals $4,250 for the year. This contract was signed January 25th of 2015 and is for a term of 36 months. We are one year and four months in of this three-year contract. Salaries, proposed budget 58,750, proposed adjustment 49,000, decreased 9,750. The FICA matched proposed budget 3,876, proposed adjustment 3,259, decrease of 617. And the Medicare match proposed budget 907, proposed adjustment 763, decrease of 144. The reason stated for decreasing these salaries and benefits was tied to the revenues in the court having diminished in the past several years. So if revenues decreased, workload should decrease as well. However, as just explained, past revenues are being aggressively correct, collected and current tickets are following proper attachment procedures, both of which takes manpower. Keep in mind, past salaries in the court department were $62,727 and current salaries are $58,750. In conclusion, the council's proposed changes primarily hinders the city's attempts to increase revenue gathering by decreasing the hours personnel are allowed to work or from utilizing an outside contract worker from gathering occupational license taxes. 
plus signed contracts of Postal Weight, Tyler Technologies, and Thompson Reuters won't be able to be paid. Overall, revenues decreased by 67,000 and expenses decreased about the same, resulting in an insignificant change of approximately a $1,600 decrease in net revenue for the year. This still leaves the city on the right track of decreasing the deficit by another 238,000 in 2016. And on an additional note, Mr. Johnson has stated that he wished to include language in the budget that states any line item adjustment, i.e. reallocation within a departmental budget after final approval shall be submitted to the council for approval through a budget amendment. Such language is an unnecessary hindrance upon the operations of any city. This is a budget. It's a best educated guess utilizing historical data and future expectations. What actually occurs during the year will never meet the budgeted line items point on and to require a line item budget change for every dollar is not practical and it will cost the city additional money to implement. For every time a budget amendment must occur, legal advertising costs will be incurred to advertise, advertise such changes to the public, additional video recording fees for the special meetings, and additional accounting and legal fees as I must spend time with creating the amendments and the city attorney and I must attend the meetings. Thank you. Prior to offering any amendments, is there any council discussion prior? No? Um, the amendments that I had recommended was the accounting maintenance contract. The mayor did send me the new renewal from Tyler Technology. Um, I did put a phone call into Tyler. I was shocked to see the increase from 2015 to 2016. I have not received a phone call back. Um, the legal fees with the lawsuits, um, right now you said they were about 30,000. Isn't it what you said, about 36? The legal fees. So I think what's trying to be accomplished here is just reduce expenses, right. okay? And where Mr. Johnson's coming at, if you live within the means of the budget that the council approves, then there may not, there should not be any amendments. If we give you $10,000 for legal fees, you live within that $10,000 for the year. That's what a budget's there for. Now we understand that there may be circumstances that come awry, I don't think, but that's what the line item budget's implemented for. We implement the budget, the, the line item is set, you live within the means of the budget. So for you to say that it's irrelevant, that changes should not come before the council, I disagree with that. We plan on buying a laptop for a certain department and you know we estimate based upon research on the website that it's going to be $500. By the time you go and you get it and you go, shoot, I need a power cord, I need a thumb drive, I need an extra battery backup, now we're at 605. We're supposed to stop production and come mm -hmm. Well, that's through. what the line item is there for. If we, if we budget it 500, then you live within the means of the five. We understand that you may not be able to, and that's when you come to the council and ask for the amendments and then we'll amend it. That's what a line item's for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're running it like a general budget. Otherwise, Agree. You're right. Agree. Right. Absolutely. Ab agree. Okay. That's what if, if computer supplies are at 10,000, you have $10,000 a year, you try to live within your means. We understand that it may not happen. But if you spent, you can't overspend without the approval of the council. That's what he's implementing. Right. Otherwise, it's a general budget, not a line item budget. Miss Lulu, aren't, don't you don't you aren't you the accountant for St. John Parish? Yes, ma'am. Do they do they have a similar um, budget uh, requirement? Requirement? No, they stay within the Louisiana rules, which says five percent over expenses or 5% under revenue is when you come and do a line item, do the budget again. Do you know of any municipality that has this sort of requirement? Not that strict, done it no. for a while. Sue, with all due respect, this is Harahan, not Harahan. Harahan has done it for a while. I'm sorry, with all due respect. That's how the ordinance I'm gonna is set up. I'm going to ask line item budget. that we're just, everyone speak once at a time, one person at a time, do not step on someone else's words as they're speaking so we can all hear what everyone has to say. Thank you. Any other comments? In defense of that, Haverhan's done it for a long time. Okay, thank you. Any, anyone else? Um, I'd also like to just go back on to the court. And I know we talked about it, this at the, at the original budget meeting. Um, you're projecting revenue and I know I had mentioned this and I will still stand to this, you cannot run a budget on projected revenue. 
statistically revenue in that department has dropped 30 percent in three years and all of a sudden in 2016 we're anticipating 67,000 in revenue which I hope they get I can't project I can't approve a budget on a projected revenue well, all the revenues are projected but you're increasing that one by 67 so just like my email states when revenue comes in and we see that there's more projection then maybe we can rediscuss and increase some lines in that department So all of the amendments that the council members sent you over uh, 20 days ago, you're addressing them tonight in um, public forum, which you should. It would have been nice to receive some type of response or, or phone call or ask for a meeting, but I appreciate you explaining it to the public tonight. Um, I stand strong with whatever amendments that I have made, and for me to approve the budget tonight, the amendments need to be made. Okay. And I hope that my fellow councilmen can um, agree. 100%. Thank you. Just so the public know, these amendments were submitted April 15th. Ms. Lulu, thank you for an excellent presentation. Uh, we will proceed with um, council members offering amendments. Yeah. Um, we will. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'd I, I thought you were stopped. Oh, I'm okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. There we, we're practicing yeah. good etiquette. Thank <laughs> you. Um, what I'd like to do is have each council member, one at a time, offer your amendments. Please submit it in writing. Um, give it. They uh, have been submitted yeah. in writing. You want it again? I, the way I think the law states is that you submit it in writing. You provide your copies to everyone. Everybody should have got mine, but I have yeah. more copies too. So the, the goal was, Mayor, that we would have sent uh, Mr. Burris the amendments prior to, which we did 20 days ago. And so that the amendments could be made, and then we could discuss from there. If, if everyone didn't agree, then we would, of course, have a discussion here. But the reason we sent the amendments 20 days ago was that it would already be here in form. Did the clerk get them? They were emailed, right, to everyone? They were emailed to the mayor, Ms. Lulu. I don't know if I got the email. Madam Clerk, do you have the amendments in front? No, sir, I do not. Did anyone ask you, um, Clerk, to, to make the changes? No, ma'am. Okay. But so you'd like them in writing. What the, the way that I understand it, Mr. Burrison, please interject, is that the mayor presents the budget. Any amendment is handled here at this meeting during this forum, and each item is voted on for the amendment. Well, that, that's correct. The, the amendments would be, would be introduced here, and it would be nice to have them in written form. I'm not sure that that's a legal requirement. I don't recall ever, have, ever having seen that in the Local Government Budget Act. Certainly it would be more efficacious for the clerk to have them in writing so that she can track what's going to be changed right. in this budget ordinance. So I, you know, I don't know where the ball got dropped and getting them in writing to the clerk so they're here on the agenda for you tonight to consider in order. But if you want to go through them one at a time, you know, orally, that's perfectly, that's I think, within the council's prerogative. It's got to do it one at a time, motion, second, vote on every amendment, I line have right by here. line. I mean, I have, I have copies of everybody's yeah. proposals. You, do you want to, we could take a, can I recommend taking a short recess sure. and we can make some copies and uh, I mean, disperse the emails, them? But we have the line Is that okay? On. Yep. All right, we'll go into a short recess sure. and we'll readjourn after we copy. Ted, it's getting a little cold. Here. The meeting is now called back to order. Um, okay. Ms. Wheeler, would yes. you like to no. offer an amendment? Okay. Go for it. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, please. Sure. You want it? Mayor, is that okay if I sure. That's fine. You want sorry. It, if we can just do it one at a time to yeah. make it easily. I, I just have one line item. I know she's looking for her numbers. Okay. Councilman Hewitt. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, in the 2016 budget under non departmental and administrative departments. Help everybody find the line item. It's under wages and benefits. It's actually page 18 in the budget. 
Are you guys trying to find it? Yep. So it's four dash one 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 four nine zero 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 salaries. The proposed budget is two hundred twenty four thousand six hundred eighty. My proposed amendment is two hundred and three thousand. Do I have a motion to amend proposed ordinance 2016-1? Um, I have a motion by Councilman Hewitt to amend it mm -hmm. as stated. Um, if that's okay, I won't sure. just repeat second. Exactly. I have a second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? We have. Wait, I'm sorry. What did you say? All in favor? I said. Uh, what are we doing? Is the amendment for salary. To make the amendment. Yes. Um, nay. So, nay. so we have four yeas, one nay. Amendment passes. Do we have another amendment being offered? Uh, I do not. Excuse me, just let me interject. Council members, just for the clarity of the record, when, you, when you're referring to what you're proposing to amend, page, line number. Thanks. Follow me. <laughs> okay. Councilman Johnston. Uh, sure. Uh, motion on the uh, ordinance itself. Um, to bump section three and four down to five and six. We're going to add section three, which says attached here to, made a part hereof, and marked fiscal year 2016 as a line item budget. And section four is going to read any line item adjustment, i.e. reallocation within a departmental budget, after final approval shall be submitted to the council for approval through a budget amendment. That number is that page numbered? No, I have um, to say the one ordinance I have 2016-1. The one I have in my packet doesn't look like that. I made this one. That's, that's oh, section. that's already with your amendment. That's my okay, amendment. when yeah. you were saying about a section five, I don't have yeah. a section five. Right. Okay, three and four down. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Are you I good? Have, do I have a motion? Uh, I have a motion to amend ordinance 2016. Dash one, as stated by Councilman Johnson, the amendment offered. Do I have a second? Motion. Second. I have a second by Councilman Wheeler. We will now take a vote. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nays. <laughs> amendment passes. Do I have Councilman Bodier? Okay, I'd like on page 18 to <coughs> amend um, line item. It's 68. It's 010 -411. 4,000 legal advertising. Wait, what uh, page was it? I'm sorry. Page 18. The second to top line. Are you missing? Page 18, non departmental. Page 18, yeah. Line 68. Line 68. Page 18, line 68. So I have a question about that one. It, it, can we do is that proper to ask? or? We have a motion, motion on yeah. the table. Oh, sorry. That's uh, we really we're supposed to discuss. Did you make your amendment? I'm making my amendment from uh, 6100 to 4750. I have a motion by Councilman uh, Bodier to uh, amend proposed ordinance 2016-1 uh, on page 18, line 68, as stated. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. Can I we say why I'm voting nay? Um, no. Well, okay. I'll, okay. after we take the vote, I'll grant okay. you. Um, I'm sorry. If we have four yeas, one nay. Amendment passes. Ms. I rec the chair recognizes Councilman Benton. Um, I, I have a problem with this one because I don't understand why we're reducing it when we have had more special meetings with this council than any previous administration, I believe. And if we are overspent on our advertising and we need to um, call a special meeting, how are we going to advertise for the special meeting if we don't have the money to advertise for it? So it puts us sort of in a conundrum. That's all. Hopefully that's we'll reduce against. special meetings. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the plan is, one, to reduce special meetings, and two, since it is a live and breathing entity, we can always add funds to it if we have to at a later date. Not without calling a special meeting. We can amend the budget at a regularly scheduled council meeting. Right. Well, that's true. That's sure. True. Correct. You're right. Thank you. Correct. Which gets advertised. Yep. Next 12, one. 12 a year. Do, um. You got another one. Yep. Oh, do we vote? Okay. Yep. You ready? 
All right, and I got one more. Um, actually, I actually have two more. Okay, um, item have, numbers. I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. Um, item number 69, uh, notary fees. I would like to change that from 1500 to zero. I'd like to make that motion. Okay, that's page. Same thing, 18, 18. 18. the next 18. line down. Okay. I have a motion by Councilman Bodier to amend ordinance, proposed ordinance 2016-1 uh, on page 18, line 69 on notary fees as stated. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. And we I, I want to go ahead. We have four yeas, one nay. Motion passed. Uh, amendment passes and the chair would like to recognize Councilman Benton. I'm, I'm concerned that we're already over budget on that because Miss Lulu said we've already spent $15 on a notary fee to date. So we're already going to have to amend that line item. So that's how ridiculous this whole system is. Next uh, amendment. All right, and I'm also going to oh, amend. That's okay. You're busy. On page uh, 20, um, I, line number seven. Uh, training and education. I would like to amend that from 4,600 to 1,000. I have a motion to amend proposed ordinance 2016 1, page 20, line number 7, uh, by Councilman Bodier, as he stated. Um, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nay, amendment passes. I'd like to uh, make, I'll comment after. Councilman Bodie, are you That's it finished? for me. Councilman Wheeler. So do you have any? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I am on page 17. Um, it's line 38, accounting maintenance contracts, which is one zero, excuse me, zero one zero four one one zero four zero six hundred accounting maintenance contracts. What line is Wait, it? what line? It's line 38 on page 17. I was just giving, I was reading the line item. Okay. Accounting maintenance contracts. Uh, it was proposed at 31,440. I um, suggest an amendment to 25,000. I did receive the invoice from Mayor Maselli, um, but like I said, I wanted to get clarification from Tyler Technologies before I approved the increase. So I would like to keep it at the twenty-five thousand, and if it, anything adjusts, we can go from there. So, so, I'm make, so, so Councilman Wheeler is supposed you you given them a call; they haven't called you back. Yes, but the assumption by you is possibly you can negotiate them staying well, at their flat rate of for the, the invoice that the mayor provided me. There was such a huge increase from last year to this year, and I right. just wanted an explanation. And it, it it was kind of difficult, and I even asked the mayor some questions, and it was difficult in how you read it, and it gave like a line, but the, the years were like. January 1st, 2030 to like 2050. It just, it didn't make any sense. So I wanted some clarification. And again, I just felt that it was such an increase from what it was previously to this year. So I just wanted to get some clarification. And until I do, I'd like to keep it at the 25. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to amend proposed ordinance 2016-1 by Councilman Wheeler, page 17 of the budget, line 38. Uh, as stated, do I have a second? second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Bodier. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nay. Amendment passes. Okay. My next one is line 40, also still page 17 under legal fees, lawsuits. Uh, the proposed is 50. I'm requesting to amend it to 40. I have a motion uh, by Councilman Wheeler to amend proposed ordinance 2016-1. Page 17, line 40, uh, as stated to $40,000. Uh, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nay. Amendment passes. Um, same thing, uh, auditing, line 44, page 17. The proposal is 45.5. In the previous years, it was at 28,000. I'd like to amend it back to the 28,000. I have a motion by Councilman Wheeler to amend proposed ordinance 2016-1, page 17, 
line 44, auditing fees to 28,000. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor? Yay. 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 Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nays, amendment passed. I would like to be recognized. Um, Ms. Wheeler, do you have? I have one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you, can I just say this? Yes. We're already, <clears throat> excuse me, over budget on this one as well because I believe Ms. Lulu said we have a $35,000 contract in place that is over a three year period. So I, I don't understand why we're, all, we're, we're <laughs> budgeting for less than we're committed to. That's why I voted against it. Okay. Councilman Wheeler. Uh, we're now page 20. This is under court. Um, the salaries line 29. Line number 01041949,000 salaries. Proposed ju budget is 58,750. Uh, I would like to amend to reduce it to 49,000. This is a department where they are presuming that revenue is going to increase. Um, and again, I, when revenue does increase, then we can rediscuss and maybe reallocate it. But I would like to amend salaries from 58,750 to 49 which would then also also reduce the FICA. I guess we'll have to get the exact percentages on that with the salary being reduced. Did you give us that? I think it was $600, if I'm not mistaken. OK. Let me do it for you. Sure. Is the, it just the FICA that gets amended? No. The, okay. the FICA match line 38 is proposed at 3876. The proposed adjustment is 3259. And that's based on the 49 salary? Yes. Okay. And the Medicare match line 40, the proposed was 907. The adjustment is 763. Okay. So then it would be amending the salaries from the 58, 750 to 49, amending line 38, which is the FICA match from 3876 to 3259, and then line 40, Medicare match from 907 to 763. I have a motion to amend proposed ordinance 2016-1 by Councilman Wheeler, page 20, lines 29, salaries 38, FICA, and 40. number 40 on uh, Medicare match. Uh, as stated, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Hew Hewitt. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Nay. We have four yeas, one nay. Amendment passes. Ms. Uh, I'd like to make some comments. I'd like to go on record as required by law. We will be overspent on the budget um, on several of the contracts that Ms. Benton has already pointed out. On the audit, we are, uh, that was signed, that contract by Councilman, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Johnston. We will be over um, on, uh, the contracts for the uh, city software, <coughs> those are things that we need to uh, run our city. We will be over on uh, the contract to fulfill West Law. It's a necessary function in order to, for any city to function and have the law available for uh, magistrate, for city attorney, for myself, for the council. We will also um, be over on salaries in the court as we require um, a second human being in the court area, uh, that will be also over budget. Um, why, I'm sorry, Mayor, why would the salaries be over budget and in court? I, I'm, I'm going on record as saying that that's, that's my expectation. The other ones are contracts that we are already obligated to, and I'm expecting that we will be proceeding to have to, re to do those salaries. That salary cut will now mean that a person who we've always had a second person in our court, that is a potential of me having to put someone on part-time or fire them. That is the result. From time immemorial, we have had two <coughs> full-time human beings in the court. That means if the, the, the clerk of court goes to lunch, no one's there. She takes vacation, no one's there. If she uh, is out sick, if she has appendix, no one's there. There's no one to learn or back up the systems, et cetera. Um, the, it's just a required duty. It's a simple function of the city. Uh, proposed ordinance number 
dash two. Well, we have to actually vote on. Oh, we have to actually yeah. vote on the um, entire before thing. We, before Thank we you. vote, I would just like to say, um, again, like Mr. Bode, Councilman Bodie said, this is a working document. If revenue increases in court and we feel that there's a need to put in another full-time person, we will. <clears throat> It's a working document. This budget will be amended, I assure you, before the year's end. And if we use that same logic, Councilman Wheeler, we wouldn't be able to have in our entire police force. We wouldn't be able to fund our firefighters. We wouldn't be able to fi fund many of our employees. There are some departments that simply do not create the revenue in order to um, give, to provide their own salaries and their budgets. Well, you're proposing an increase in court. It's not an, in, it's a, it's a You, you just proposed increase. a $67,000 increase in court. I proposed to have two people in the court. The clerk of court is actually making less than our previous clerk of court, and our deputy clerk is making less than the previous deputy clerk of court. You can explain it any way you want. You've increased so, it by 67000 and over the last three years, the revenue has decreased. That is, there, those are the facts. The, Increase in the revenue, let's explain, I want to just explain this before we do the final adoption. The, in 2012, the city stopped, um, they allowed attachments to prescribe, meaning they expired. So people who were in violation of traffic, who didn't show up for court or criminal offenses, their violations just went away. The bond on each one of those is $100. We lost, potentially only in bond, $205,000. We reinitiated and stopped prescription, cleared out a backlog of almost a year's worth of work and doing our current work. When people are picked up on attachments, they have to pay the bond, they come to court, and then they have to pay fines. The only way that you can get attachments out is to have the human beings who enter them into the computer. So without the staff, prescription will happen. Can I say something about that? Yes, you know, I recognize. Um, I guess Ms. I want to reiterate what Ms. Lulu, Ms. Lulu said that um, by eliminate, if, if the mayor has to eliminate that position, it, that will inhibit that department's ability to um, re recover those funds through the attachments because that person won't be there to do that job. So you're sort of s shooting yourself in the foot when you uh, sort of get rid of one position that would bring the revenues up. Um, I just wanted to make that point. Sue, so, and it's always the sky's falling. We have one city clerk one city clerk, when she was on maternity leave, the mayor just said this evening, how, how much in, um, taxes do we collect? We did the job when you were on maternity leave and you're one person. Everyone pulls up everyone's slack and they pull together and get the job done. I'll address this in executive session later. Thank you. Great. We have a vote to a pass the budget 2016-1 uh, with uh, stated amendments, all in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance passes. Proposed ordinance 2016-2. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier and seconded by Councilman. Who would like to second this one? Uh, I'll second. Johnston. An ordinance to amend and reordain uh, section 6-73B of chapter six of the Harahan Municipal Code Ordinance 1669 relative to location restrictions of alcoholic beverage outlets to restrict same to locations 100 feet or more distance of a building occupied ex exclusively as a church or synagogue or public library or public playground or school except for business education conducted as a business, co business college or school and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. We will now open up to public hearing to address this particular ordinance. Anyone who wishes to address, please come up, state your name and address, please. Me. 
Eugene Casanay, 46 Oak Avenue, Harahan, Louisiana. I'm against this change. The state law states 300 feet from a church or a school or a library, and so does our zoning ordinance. Mr. Bodier, am I correct in saying that this was done for the Happy Italian Restaurant? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't you realize that this affects the entire city, not just the Happy Italian, and the zoning law prohibits a lounge or bar from being next to residential, and this property abuts a residential. So will they be in violation of the zoning law? The council took an oath to uphold our laws, not to change them. This council better think twice before changing this important law. Thank you. My name is Deirdre Boudreau Lapinto, and I live at 126 Donnellan Drive. Um, I'm new to this. Uh, I've been here since I was 11 years old, living in Harahan, but um, I haven't been involved uh, <clears throat> now that I have more leisure time. Um, it's very interesting. Um, so in relation to this ordinance, this proposal, um, I am totally shocked that this is even being considered. Um, 300 feet uh, is the norm, it's the state law, it is written in history, um, it, this is not uh, gonna go well with the public, um, we're already talking about it. Um, you're next to a school, you're next to a residential area, and I think this is a very, very, very bad idea for the city. Terry Valenti, 191 Colonial Club Drive. I, um, I'm concerned about this too because of a lot of things that come up about ordinances and a lot of the problems and controversy that the citizens come and speak to at these meetings concern um, benefits that friends of council members get. Um, and I believe that the owner of the Happy Italian is a personal friend of Mr. Bodier's. Mr. Bodier tried to get this in before his intended uh, shutting down the last meeting to just because he knew no business was gonna be taken care of. Uh, Mr. Bodier, I'm asking you to withdraw it and uh, if not, to recuse yourself. And I don't think it's in the best interest if you allow your friend to do this, then you cannot deny others to come into our city and ask uh, for the same thing, and that's where the problem lies. Once you change this and allow one uh, business to start selling liquor close to churches, residential areas, and schools, you're gonna have to allow it for others or we're gonna be sued. It's a bad idea. Erica Parrick, 70 Ren Pass. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask a question. I just wanted to, and she kind of <coughs> clarified some things. Um, if this ordinance passes, and a, let's just say another bar or place that sells alcohol comes and requests to have a location within the 100 feet, would they have to be allowed to do so? So it would open the door for other not so pleasant places. And we all know Happy Italian is a pleasant place, <laughs> but um, other not so pleasant places could be allowed. Okay, and if the ordinance does not pass, would Happy Italian have to shut down? Or they just would not be allowed to serve alcohol? Just alcohol. Just high, high, high content. High, high content, so content. liquor. They can do beer and wine. Beer and yeah. wine, okay. <laughs> Um, and I mean, I'm kind of torn on this because I mean, I d we don't want to affect the business's income. They pay taxes, they pay for their licensing and everything. Um, but I, I certainly would hate to open the door for, like I said, a not so pleasant right. establishment to be that close to my, my St. Rita. <laughs> 
Eric Chatelain, 700 Colonial Club Drive. Uh, Happy Italian is a, a restaurant, which is a business in Harrahan. We all say we open for business and we want more business. I believe we have a first class police department. If we have an alcohol problem at this, police, at this facility, I believe they're gonna have a phone call, the police are gonna attend to this function that they're having at the, at the Happy Italian. I don't understand how we're gonna sit there and say we open for business and then we're gonna accuse council members up here of being personal friends with people and they should recuse themselves from voting on this. A lot of these people up here, they support every business in Harrahan. I mean, I'm personal friends with almost every restaurant in Harrahan. I eat at almost every restaurant in Harrahan. I spread it around. So for y'all accuse someone up here to recuse themselves from voting, that just that doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Hello. April Lopez, I live on Ray Van. Um, Happy Italian is one of my favorite restaurants in Harahan, and it's uh, very close to my neighborhood. Um, I'd like to ask you guys to consider not voting for this um, because it would affect my neighborhood directly along with the other potential businesses in Harahan. Um, they knew what they were getting into when they put their business there. I'm okay with the liquor and wine. I just think when you start getting into the higher content alcohol that you open yourself up to you know, other aspects that we just aren't really wanting to do, especially next to schools and churches. And <laughs> it opens us up to other things that we don't really want to invite. So I just ask y'all to consider not voting for that. Ray Thompson, 185 McHugh Drive. <clears throat> this proposed ordinance is very poorly thought out and very ill-constructed. It would allow bars, bars within 100 feet of churches, et cetera, et cetera. If it was better thought out and you were trying to accommodate the needs of a restaurant, you could write a better ordinance that would accommodate X percentage or would require X percentage of food sales or, or liquor sales not to exceed some percentage of their gross revenues. This is a very, very bad ordinance, not very well thought out at all. Thank you. The public hearing is now closed. Uh, council discussion. May I like to motion to make uh, some uh, amendments to this ordinance. Okay. Um, I agree with Ray, Mr. Ray Thompson. I uh, talked to the city attorney and he gave me certain things that I, I can do to be able to accommodate but not totally wreck the law. Um, first one is, is in the preamble under line four, uh, the location changing that back to 300 from 100. The section one, line nine, changing the 100 back to 300. And the last one is on line 22 where it says restaurant not maintaining a service bar and selling beer only for consumption on the premises. Take that completely out and put in standard bar. I mean, standard restaurant, I'm probably, no bar, standard restaurant. And that's it. I have a motion so, oh, that one. not maintaining a service bar. It's, it's written yes. on the uh, handout yeah, you under, provided. From restaurant all the way to premises. <laughs> restaurant not maintaining a service bar and selling beer only for consumption on the premises. You're changing that with the word just standard restaurant, which allows mm -hmm. for a holding bar when food's being served. Standard restaurant is a defined term in the Harahan Municipal Code. The standard restaurant as defined in Appendix A, Section 3 of the Municipal Code, is a restaurant whose principal business is the sale of foods and beverages to the customer in a ready-to-consume state to be eaten on premises. It may or may not contain a holding bar with sale of alcoholic beverages concurrent with the sale of food items. Providing the holding bar shall not exceed 10 percent, not to exceed 400 square feet of the seating area of the restaurant. So that's already a defined term. So in order to restrict this, to this restaurant use within the 300 feet as an exclusion, just took the definition of standard restaurant and plugged it in instead of this language, restaurant not maintaining a service bar and selling beer only for consumption on the premises. I, I'm not sure where the service bar came from because service bar is not defined anywhere in Harahan law that I can find. So I, I'm not sure how the Happy Italian got its, its license in the first place, but uh, it does have a low alcoholic beverage consumption license. 
to get the high alcoholic consumption license, Councilman Johnson's redefinition says you have to be a standard restaurant in order to get it. If you're within 300 feet, then you have to be a standard restaurant. So it, it's not opening it up, as some of the speakers have said, right. to bar rooms. Right. We're going to restrict it to a standard restaurant as defined in the Harahan Municipal Code. <coughs> Am I making, yes. is that clear? I, I just have one question. Um, I know we had to put the NU Batcher ordinance in front of planning and zoning, and it would seem to me this one is even more important. Do we not have to run this one in front of that? Well, that board? you know, this this isn't you know a zoning ordinance that we're dealing with. This ordinance falls under Article Two, real retailers and wholesalers of of alcoholic beverages. So, you know, I I don't see as a matter of law where this changes a zoning classification in any way, shape, or form. This is simply a regulation. Uh, of alcoholic beverages and can be done by the council without the input of the planning and zoning board. So we have a motion on the table to amend ordinance number 2016-3 as follows by Councilman Johnson in the pre line, uh, in the preamble line four change 100 to 300 yeah. in section one line nine change 100 to 300 in section one beginning on line 22 delete the words restaurant not maintaining a service bar and selling beer only for consumption on the premises and insert in lieu thereof the words standard restaurant as defined by the comprehensive zoning law appendix a section three of the harriham municipal code do i have a second mayor second. mayor I, I would second or i just want to ensure mr beers that you're you're okay with this verbiage you yeah this I, is I, appropriate I, you I, helped <laughs> i just want to ensure I worked, with, I worked with councilman yes. johnson to to draft okay. it i mean we yes. and you know we took a look at the at the use and uh, I, I want to thank him for co calling to my attention the term that I had never heard of, which is holding bar. And I've okay. been in this, I've been in a lot of bars in my so life. You, re <laughs> you, re you recommend the changes? I, I, uh, I, yes, I recommend them okay. as restricting this use to the happy Italian. So far as I can tell the in the city of Harahan, this is restricted to that particular use. Okay. So Sorry, Kim. motion as stated, I have a second by by Councilman Wheeler. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Yay. 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 Any opposed? We have five yays, zero nays. Ordinance passes. Oh, that was oh, this. No, that was no, just I'm sorry, the amendment passes. The amendment passes. The amendment. I'd still like to make some discussion about the ordinance. Okay. Um, when it starts getting the right. amendment <laughs> right. inserted in, it gets a little uh, convoluted. Um, Councilman Bodier, the chair recognizes. Well, um, after being taken shots at, you know, like I would not, I would just expect anyway um, from uh, the allies of the mayor. Um, with this was well thought of. We had done a lot of homework. I didn't just come in to help a friend. And I gotta be honest with you, if you're a business in Harahan, you're my friend. Yep. And I'm gonna do everything I can to support you. And if you're doing wrong, I'm gonna do everything you can to tell you that you're doing wrong. If you're doing right, I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna patronize your company and I'm gonna do great. Mr. Linney is, is not a personal friend, but yes, I call every business in Harrahan my friend. I've been pro-business from day one and I'll be pro-business till the day I'm gone. Thank you. Without any further uh, discussion, we'll proceed with a vote uh, with the amendment, uh, uh, amendment changes. Um, Mayor, can I ask Mr. Oh, Beers one I'm more sorry. thing before we move to the vote? So, again, we made the amendments, right. and, and uh, you and Councilman Johnston worked on this. Um, you feel fine that this is not going to put us in any type of legal issue? It's not arbitrary and capricious? I, I this is safe for us to move forward to I, do. I don't think you're being arbitrary and capricious. I mean, this, this particular use, uh, this particular business already has the license. I, you know, I don't want to go talking out of turn, but they've already got a license, so I think they've got a leg up on, on, on this. By the way, I've heard tonight that, that there's a state concern. Alcohol and, and tobacco control, uh, it is my understanding, usually defers to the local authorities. If it's okay with them, then it's going to be if it's okay with the local Correct. authority, then it'll be okay with them. If ATC has a problem with this use, they have their own legal staff and their own ability to come in and, and decide who's going to get the license. So every business has to have two licenses, both the local license and the state license. Um, but ATC has told us, and I think it's told Chief Walker, that what you guys do, if that's OK with you, it's OK with us. Now, just recall that this is restricted to a restaurant use, as one of the speakers said. This isn't 
you know, anything but a standard restaurant use. That's what the exception is carved out for. So any uses other than standard restaurant who want liquor licenses within 300 feet of a school, you know, don't get them under this amendment. Okay. Thank you. We'll proceed with the vote on the ordinance. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance passes. Ordinance for introduction. Uh, proposed ordinance number 2016-3. Um, the following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Benton and seconded by Councilman Second. Hewitt. An ordinance to amend and reordain ordinance 1333, section 15, relative to the zoning classification NU non-urban Batcher district, Harahan Municipal Code 1990, appendix A, by amending subsection B thereof, relative to permitted uses, by adding thereto a new subsection governing the hours of operation of commercial enterprises therein, and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. This ordinance is now uh, open to public hearing. Anyone wishing to come and speak to this ordinance, please come up, state your name and address, please. Can I interject, Mayor? Yes. I, I was under the impression that right. this had been referred to the Planning oh, and Zoning right. Advisory Board. So <laughs> Thanks for I, keeping I'm, me on track. I'm not exactly sure how it got there, but that's where it is right now. It's been advertised in the Planning and Zoning Advisory Board. Commission, so, rather, has this on their agenda tonight. So we would I'll need a motion, motion to, defer. to defer. So I think you just... Well, I, I think what you needed was a motion to refer it to the commission, um, but it's already over there, so I, I think that's a vain and useless thing. It's already over there, yeah. You can just move <laughs> to defer it until you have a report back from the okay. Planning and Zoning Commission. Do it I goes there in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to defer motion. to the next regular city council meeting? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Bodier, seconded Second. by Councilman Johnston. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Deferment passes. Ordinance for introduction. Yeah, Madam Clerk, do you need a recess? Yeah. Proposed. Proposed ordinance number 2016-4. The following ordinance was proposed by councilman. Should this be unanimous? Mm -hmm. It's from Millage. If everybody's on board, I'll yeah, it's Millage, but huh. can you do uh, ordinances unanimous? Unanimous. Oh, unanimous. If everybody's I don't on know board. If you can do yeah, you can. yeah. Okay. You take a unanimous one. From Millage. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. An ordinance levying a tax of 13.93 mills on each dollar of assessed valuation on all taxable properties in the city of Harahan for the year 2016 and authorizing the tax collector to collect said taxes on all taxable property within the incorporated limits of the city of Harahan and to otherwise provide with, res with respect thereto. Um, Mr. Hugh Martin was here at our last meeting and he said it would probably be best uh, to defer this ordinance until actually with, withdraw withdraw mm -hmm. this ordinance until yeah. we're ready that this is uh, coming before started. the council too too early mm -hmm. okay. um, if anyone would a motion to withdraw I have a motion to withdraw the ordinance by Councilman Johnston seconded by Councilman Wheeler all in favor yay, yay. Yeah. any opposed we have five yay zero nays uh, the ordinance is withdrawn all right there's no old business New business number one, Coretta's Grill, 1821 Hickory Avenue, is requesting permission to hold their annual Cinco de Mayo celebration on Thursday, May 5th, 2016, from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. They're also requesting to block off Hickory Avenue from Dufresne Street to Dock Street during the celebration. Uh, Chief Walker and Chief Sancier, I invite you to give comment. Last month when I received this request, I contacted... Jefferson Parish, Councilman Paul Johnson's office in regards to blocking off the street. That portion of Hickory Avenue is property of Jefferson Parish. Uh, they came back and they said there's no way it could be blocked off. So that part's denied. Councilman, uh, I mean, Chief St. Sierra was making you a councilman. Well, on that note, it doesn't seem that I need to, to <laughs> not I, make any friends here or <laughs> make any friends here, so I'll keep my comments to myself. <laughs> but in the future, if they'd like to do it and we do have a say, I would be opposed to it. Okay. And the reason is, is uh, 
quite dangerous right. the way that the layout of the street is down there to uh, get around it would most certainly add time to a response. Trying to move people out of the street would be dangerous, especially on Cinco de Mayo <laughs> and drinking <laughs> margaritas. Um, it's just, you know, an error in dispatch by, by numeric, and we once we commit past Gardner Street, uh, just imagine trying to get around that once you commit past Gardner Street. Uh, you're adding three minutes to your response. Um, that's a lifetime uh, when the fire storm is near. So we would definitely be opposed. Okay. I'd Do like to add, last year they had it, and we had a police detail. Right. And they have inquired about it. And we have a detailed plan for tomorrow night also. So. And that's the question I have. Uh, to go with this, if of course, we can't block the street off, so we would have to deny that, but how do we allow them to, didn't have to come before the council last year for so. for approval to have the party yeah, outside? Have outside, uh, outside so, bar. so how, how would we do that where we're not giving permission for them to block off the street, but we're still giving them permission to so, uh, well, well, so have alcohol outside. outside. They sell it in the parking lot. In the parking lot. Quite usually, actually, I was there. We had right. officers so there how, on a detail. How do we go about doing that? I thought everybody got copied on the, the email that I sent right. around when, mm -hmm. when yeah. Nicole asked about this. And, I just wanted you right. That's why I'm bringing it up because I wanted you to yeah, clarify you're, everything. You're, <laughs> The, the city's laws with regard to special events and who gets them and how they're issued are a real hodgepodge. I mean, you have a special event permit that the council gives to 501c3s for alcoholic beverage consumption. Uh, then you've got a separate section that deals with council permitting alcoholic beverage consumption for special events that are on public uh, property, recreational properties. But in this instance, this is neither a 501c3, nor is it being hosted on recreational property. And the only sections of the Harahan Municipal Code that address this say that the permit can be issued by the city clerk depending upon whether the police chief has been petitioned for a police detail and has approved the police detail. So the only way that I could see Coretta slotting into this for its alcoholic beverage permission was to use those, those provisions of the HMC that give the clerk the power to issue the permit dependent upon the police chief's approval. So. If you want to change that for the future, yeah, you can do some sort of comprehensive thing, but uh, that's, what I, that's the only way I could find for the ABO license to be issued for a private event on private property uh, where they're, they're outside of the bounds of their normal mm -hmm. permit, which is their restaurant. So there really is no need for a motion? Right. There was no Correct. need. For, I found no need okay. for council manager. So we, so we, we can, can vote this down. It won't affect that at yeah, all. We, uh, you can, you so can. we can actually have a motion to withdraw well, you, this you item can, under new Yeah, business. you can withdraw it or just say we approve what the clerk did. Okay. Do I have a motion um, to approve uh, actions by the city clerk to grant permission for this uh, selling of liquor outside alcoholic beverages outside of their restaurant facility for tomorrow's celebration. Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Hewitt, seconded, seconded. by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. So we have to? Permission grant. That just uh, over, it's done. overrides this? It's, it's, okay. it's, it's done. Okay. The clerk has already <laughs> issued it. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> you issued the permit. That was a little confusing a little bit. <laughs> Madam Clark, number two. Uh, number two, new business. St. Rita's Dad's Club is requesting permission to sell beer at the third annual St. Rita Dad's Club Crawfish Cook-Off on Saturday, May 14th from 9 a.m. until 11 p.m. They're also requesting to block Berg Street from Imperial Woods to Rayvan Avenue during the celebration. Do I have a motion uh, to grant permission to block the street as well as to um, sell beer. Thank you, sell beer. Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Wheeler to grant permission. All in favor? Yes. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Permission is granted. Okay. Number three, high content ABO application for happy Italian uh, 7105 Jefferson Highway for uh, Leonard and Sandra Minatillo. <laughs> Um, this is uh, a little premature, being that this is coming before the board before 
the ordinance can take effect. The ordinance takes effect in 10 days, right. so it really would have to come back up before with the board. Okay, the 10 days are when you sign, right? What? 10 days or when you sign. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I mean, she could sign the fee. Well, the, the minutes, don't you, the minutes have to be approved before, when do you send out the ordinance? Do you have it been approved? Yes. The city clerk doesn't type the minutes. Okay. Well, it's the city clerk doesn't type the minutes. I mean, when does, when does the ordinance that's adopted by the council, the clerk transmits that to the mayor, right? Mm -hmm. And when do you? I usually give it to her the next day. The next day. So, okay. I mean, if you want to run back there and type it up now, I guess the mayor can sign it right now. Type up well. the meeting. The ordinance that's changing. So oh, oh make the amendment? Right. I believe you take a recess. Let's get it off the agenda. Sure. All um, right. We can take. Um, a recess for the city clerk to conduct uh, some simple business. Thank you. Hey, Tim, are we still rolling, Tim? Are we still rolling? The city council meeting is now resumed. <clears throat> uh, city attorney Burris, if it. Uh... Yes, I've reviewed, the, I've reviewed the ordinance, and yes, it, it does contain all of the amendments as uh, proposed and adopted. ready to be signed by the mayor. And I have just signed it into law. So uh, it is no longer a proposed ordinance. It is now an ordinance on the books. Madam Clerk. Yeah. Please do. New business number three, high content ABO application for Happy Italian, 7105 Jefferson Highway for Leonard and Sandra Minutillo. Do I have a motion to grant permission for the ABO? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnson, Second. seconded by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays, ordinance uh, permission granted. All right. Um, new business number four, nominations for planning and zoning and appeals board. I'd like to take this moment to personally thank Ms. Penny Perino for her service to the city over the many years of serving on the board. Um, thank you. We have a lot of gratitude for all our citizens who take the time to come to the meetings and uh, research our zoning and um, put, give us their input. So uh, she's already left, but I. I will, again, extend that to her personally. Um, I would like to also uh, take this number opportunity to restate that uh, any uh, nominees that you would like to put forward for those boards, please to give them to me by the end of next week. So you don't want them right now? Just if, if you want to say who yeah. you would like to uh, put on the board, that's fine. For the plan and zoning that we're at, or you can, um, anyone, uh, you the, can. Well, the appeals board, I'd like to uh, nominate Paul Jouet to back, okay. and also Richard Kiddock back. Okay, thank you. I would like to nominate Miss Penny Perino to stay on the plan and zoning. Um, Miss Penny, I think I think her term is up. Uh, the appeals board, you your your term limit oh, she does can not no expire. Be on planning and zoning, but planning and zoning, yeah. You have you, you have Thanks, two I terms. Didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Um, number five, new business change date for the month of May regular city council meeting. I had sent out a memo. My son is graduating this year. Um, at the next regular city council meeting. Uh, is actually when he receives um, an award as a senior from Jesuit. He's a National Merit finalist. He's been uh, contacted within the last several days saying he will get a very prestigious award and I'd like to attend, but I'd also like to meet my obligations for the city. I would like to respectfully request that this board uh, move the regular scheduled meeting from the, uh, that Thursday to Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. That would be, move it to Wednesday, May 18th. 
council discussion on that? I just wanted to verify. I thought there was some email that followed yours that um, Mr. Hugh Martin said we couldn't because of advertising. And if that's fine, then. No, he said that it would be no problem. Well, we can't. Well, that's move not what he said that. in the email, but something else has transpired? Yeah, since then, we haven't gotten the numbers from Jefferson Parish Assessor's Office yet. Okay. That's why we withdrew that millage. So then all the dates will change anyway. So right. it doesn't matter. We're going to have to go through all that again. Okay. Can I have a motion to change the date by someone to the 18th? That's May 18th for the regular city council meeting at 730. I have a motion by Councilman Benton, seconded by. It's Wednesday the 18th. So no one will second it. I'll second. I have a second by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor of moving the regular city council meeting? Yes. Is everybody available May 18th? Yeah, that's that's what I said. I don't <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry. I, was checking. I didn't realize. You said you were available. I no, no, know. that's what I was saying. I, I knew she originally, the request was either the 17th, 18th, or 2 o'clock on the 19th. I'm available the 18th at 730. Yeah, at 730, right. I'm not available early in the day on any day. Okay. Right. So we have a motion. Where we had a motion and second. We had a motion Jeff. by yeah, Councilman Benton Hewitt. Hewitt. By uh, Councilman Benton. Yeah, I, I'm not. Seconded by count, <laughs> Councilman Hewitt. Can we Hewitt. decide on the date? As if if y'all aren't available, let's talk about it. I believe that the, that the, the citizens of Harahan are, are, you know, know that the meeting's going to be on a Thursday night. I believe that Councilman Johnson's mayor pro tem, that's his duty. And I think we should not change the meeting. I think it should go as planned. The mayor has made that statement several times, you know, and, and resistance to us about having special meetings, which I'm still highly opposed to as well. Um, so I think we should go as planned. I think Councilman Johnson's got this. I've got a motion on the table by Councilman Benton, seconded by Councilman Hewitt. All in favor? Yes. Nay. 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 I, I don't. So, so um, Mr. Beers, can Councilman Johnston be in person? Oh, no, I'll be here. Can he Can he preside? Yeah. Yes. But I'll be here. Um, it's sad. Uh, we have one yay. Uh, uh, it's on the Wait, we cannot speak from the floor. I'm sorry. Anybody who will have to be escorted out. Mayor, nobody's denying you for going to your son's. Excuse me, I didn't recognize that the motion's on the table. We have how many yays? One, One yay. Nays? Yay. Nay. 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 We have four nays. The motion fails. I'll be missing my son's program. Thank you. As Councilman, Next. Okay. As Councilman Wheeler stated, you do not have to miss anything. They have oh, no. ways that the mayor doesn't have to be no, here no. to do a meeting. I, I've been lectured to that we would not even pass budgets on special meetings, and here we are on a special well, meeting. Well, technically, this budget. change into Wednesday will be a special meeting. True. So I could sit and or ask for a special meeting, but I, used, I was trying to be polite and ask this board to make that motion to move it to the Wednesday before. That's simply said. And I had no so problem with it, but, but some people Let's move on to the next one. Weren't available that night, so let's. Number six for new business, City Hall Security. I believe Ms. Hewitt put this on. Um, I'd like to make some comments before. Upon taking the office, City Hall had little to no security. Camera wires were cut and security equipment missing. Exterior doors did not close properly and on numerous occasions were found opened after business hours. Also cited by the Legislative Auditor's report September 2015 was the fact that due to missing records, it was recommended that we secure the premises to protect vital information. Our employees have also expressed serious concerns about their safety while at work. Any further public discussion about City Hall security or security of our city business, uh, buildings would be inappropriate, and I move to take this up in executive session. And I'd also Councilman like Wheeler, to. Didn't you send some questions? I did. I emailed the mayor just a few questions yesterday and told her that I would have a few more. I, why are we discussing city hall security privately? I'm sure the citizens of Harahan would know. My questions are 
I believe we we best do it in in. Mr. Beers, it's a sensitive issue. Well, I mean, this, this, we we this in executive we do um, employee issues and lawsuits. Uh, I think there's also an exception for uh, it's related to the the um, the terrorist concerns. I think there is something in the in the state law that allows you to discuss security measures in executive session, and it was it was done because of you know the concerns over. I mean, it's, it's something that you yeah you got it. Thank you, Nicole. Discussions regarding a report development, a course of action regarding security personnel plans or devices. So yeah, that's an appropriate subject for an executive session. Thank you. Okay, and so we can I expect our answers to the questions in executive session. I would like to also, um, Madam Clerk, is the next item is Kevin Johnson, as this is a personnel matter. And there is a hint of litigation. I believe that this also should be taken up in executive session. So I'd like to make a motion to take up both these issues in executive session as, uh, presently, if anyone would like to make that motion. Uh -huh. I have a motion by Councilman Benton, seconded by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Uh, we will convene into ex executive session. First page. No, we, we would go to executive, come back and oh, yeah. address the council. We're on. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion um, to amend the agenda. This was um, I don't. This was put on a DS for us. This is a motion for a proposed ordinance to. Uh, oh, yeah. To change two 30 foot lots into a 60 foot lot on Hickory. So you'd like to amend put it up for a first reading? So you'd like to amend, like like the amend, to amend the agenda? To put this ordinance up. Would you read the title, please? It's proposed ordinance number 2016 5, uh, an ordinance approving the resubdivision of, six, of 651 Hickory, lot 13 and 14 square P, Harahan City Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Mal. Mandel Edwards Serving Incorporated, dated November 17, 2015. Okay. I have a motion to amend the agenda to add stated uh, proposed ordinance by Councilman Bodier, seconded, seconded by Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. Ordinance is now on for first reading and should be second reading uh, for May 19th. Restated, or that was the first. Yeah, um, so now we've amended it to the agenda, Madam Clerk. Do you want to? You have it. That's right. Uh, proposed ordinance. Uh, the filing ordinance was proposed by Councilman Bodier. An ordinance, appro proposed ordinance number 2016 5, an ordinance approving the resubdivision of 651 Hickory Avenue, lots 13 and 14, square P, Harahan City Subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, made by Mandel Edwards Surveying Incorporated, dated November 17, 2015. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Oh. Madam Clerk. Address, oh, the to address the council. We will now address the council. Anyone wishing to address the council, please come to the podium to your right. Please state your name and address. And you have three minutes. Ms. Majing, if you just give me a minute, I'll put your buzzer on. Yes, ma'am. Majing Casne, 46 Oak Avenue, Harahan, Louisiana. Is the May the 19th meeting being changed or not? It's not. Not. It's very petty for this council to not change by one day so the yes, mayor can go to her son's graduation or get his awards. You changed the meeting from last week to today, didn't you? You called a, a special meeting. 
What's the difference if you're changing it by one day? Uh, you people are very petty. You, you don't want to make concessions for nothing if it doesn't please you all. I had my say on that. Now the next thing. Is the budget a proposed budget? Nope. It is now passed, Ms. Major. It's not a proposed budget. It, it's passed now. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm not in favor of what y'all did. Y'all robbing the city. The city won't, you're taking so much money away from the different departments. You're not even going to have enough money to pay the city to keep it running. You all ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You don't belong in this council. Okay, Erica, Parrick, Run Pass Avenue. Um, I, I think most people know the way I feel about the way the mayor has treated my family and friends. Not happy about it. Don't agree with um, the way that they've been treated by the mayor. However, I am also a mother, and I understand that she doesn't have to uh, miss her son's award that, that we can have someone sit in for Mayor Pro Tem. But as a parent, I, I wish that y'all would, I think it would show kindly on y'all that y'all are at least trying a little bit to work with her to consider moving that meeting. I mean, I understand it's not exactly necessary in y'all's eyes, but just as a mother, and again, y'all know how I feel about the mayor, so I, this really, I can grit in my teeth saying this, but, <laughs> you know, the woman deserves to go to her son's award ceremony and, and still be able to, um, you know, meet her, her requirements or duties here. That's just my personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Terry Valenti, 191 Colonial Club Drive. Thank you for that comment. Uh, I understand that all of us have feelings that um, we've been struggling with throughout the city struggle to get the mayor and the council to come together. And, and that was a very awesome thing that you did, considering your personal feelings. Um, I think it reflects poorly on the four councilmen to take the position that they did. You all have children, yourselves. You could be in the same position. You may be in the same position one day. And um, I, I don't personally see how you can walk out of here and take satisfaction in keeping the mayor from uh, an important event like that um, and not know that you're going to be viewed so poorly by the public. But that just came up. I, I actually have a few thank yous to say, and I hope I can do them in three minutes. Ms. Height, Lulu, thank you for all the hours you've put into the budget. Thank you for your recommendations. Thank you for your presentations. You presented them all in a way that all of us could understand, uh, and all of us can't always understand about municipal budgets, but uh, your recommendations made a lot of sense, and <clears throat> very disappointed that the uh, four councilmen ignored all of your recommendations, every single one of them. The four were in 100% agreement that they were going to ignore our CPA's recommendations, even though some of them seemed completely um, a no-brainer. <clears throat> Mr. Johnston, hold on to your seat. I'm holding. You ready? I'm holding. Thank you. Thank you for taking the position that you took on that terrible piece of legislation that Mr. Bodier presented and that you got with our city attorney and you did the right thing by the city of Harahan tonight on that issue. Thank you so much. That's what we want to see more of from each of you. And um, last, I would like to thank the mayor and her staff for collecting the huge amount of money that was owed to the city uh, with little resources. Um, that's an amazing feat and you announced it and 
We, we're also thankful for the police presence here tonight, and I think a lot of us were a little afraid to clap, but thank you very much. That's awesome. That's all I have to say. Thank you. We will now close address the council. Secretary's report. Secretary's report for March. Total revenue, $586,129.65. Reports. Chief Walker. Good evening, Mayor, Council, viewing audience. Give a report for the month of March 2016. We had 745 calls for service. There were 21 accidents reported. We issued 118 citations for 204 charges. We had seven patrol requests. The number of arrests for the month were 134 for 255 different charges. 54 were traffic, 40 felony, 131 were misdemeanors, and 30 city charges. We had three residential burglaries, one attempted burglary, 17 larceny thefts, and 13 assaults. I also want to share with you, this past Saturday, the City of Harriman Police Department participated with the Drug Enforcement Administration on their drug take back program. We picked up over 245 pounds of unwatered drug that we turned over to DEA for proper disposal. So congratulate you all for your participation. It was over 12 boxes, so it went very well. Last year it was about 200 pounds, so hopefully next year we can make it a bigger increase. Thank you. Councilman, uh, Chief St. Cyr. <laughs> I keep wanting to call you Councilman. I haven't retired yet. <laughs> <laughs> That was not an announcement, by the way. <laughs> Just to let y'all know, trust me, after retirement, I'm going far, far away. Uh, in March, where, where are we, April? We're in May. <laughs> Trying to think which report this was supposed to be. I have it right here on my phone. For whatever month it was, the month for this council meeting. Uh, we had uh, two accident, auto accidents with injury, 12 medical assistance, uh, including one that uh, was for CPR. Uh, two automatic fire alarms, two structure fires, and two investigations. Um, I think that I had stated at one of the previous council meetings that we have received more fire alarms. Please feel free to give the fire station a call at 737-9957. Be happy to come out and install fire alarms in your home. Uh, if we run out again, I understand we'll, we should be able to get more. Uh, so please give us a call. It kind of slowed down a little bit. I think to date we have put them in you're supposed to be able to spit that information out there. Yeah, dude. I, I know it's it's well over 60 homes uh, that we've put fire alarms in, which is a great benefit to us in the fire department. Early notification is the key. So uh, those of you who don't have them, please give us a call. We'd love to put them in your homes, too. Thank you very much. Councilman Bodier. No matter what I do, I'm always going to be taking a shot at by May Jean Casane and Terry Valenti. So I'm kind of pretty much impervious to it anymore. Um, you can sit up here and ridicule me about my ordinance, but at least I had the foresight to open up the door to get an ordinance created to try to help promote a business, to help promote tax dollars, to maybe help the drainage from your yard where you, Miss Malenti, actually have dog kennels in the back um, that you're draining all kind of uh, dog sewage on everybody's properties. Um, so, uh, you know, when you want to sit up here and you want to take shots at me, I don't mind. I know I'm here doing my job. I know I'm here helping business. But you know what the sad thing is? This mayor actually went to a business owner that I've been helping and told that man, don't get in bed with Mr. Bodier. I never ask anyone to get in bed with me here. Never. I help business. That's what I've done. That's what I've always said. That's what I've always been about pro-colonial, about putting business on the front 15 to help the city grow so someday when the surge and drainage does completely quit, which is probably very close to being soon, we'll have the tax dollars to help actually fix that. So next time you want to come take some shots at me, I welcome it. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. No report. Councilman Hewitt. No report. Councilman Benton. Oh, I wanted to thank, I think you're Nicole's cousin, Erica, parent, uh, for your unbiased um, opinion and your willingness to share that with this audience today. Thank you. Um, I have a few. No, just uh, skip Councilman Wheeler. Oh, sorry. Okay. No <laughs> report. Wheeler, I didn't mean to skip you. It's okay. You're so quiet all the time. That's why. 
Your report, please. No report. No report. Um, I would also like to thank Erica. That was um, magnanimous of you, and I think we could all learn from your example tonight. So thank you very much. Good family. Um, yeah. I'd also um, like to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. That's coming up. Please, everyone, enjoy your family. Bring them close. Uh, love them, nurture them, and, the, and be there for each other. Um, on some other good news, I, want, I should have really announced this in the beginning of the meeting. We had a lot to say, and I'm going to make a lot more hoopla out of this. Um, the city of Harahan has reached a milestone. There is a renaissance that's underway. The Burger King is sold. There are only two families that can take credit for this. This was the Santa Padre family, the owner, and Mr. and Mrs. Scoggin, the new, the buyer of the property. They work together to move our city forward. They have wonderful plans. I'm inviting them to come before the council. It's an exciting, exciting day. That contract was signed just recently. They, um, I'll let them tell you about their endeavors when they come. So from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank Mr. Santa Padre and the Scoggin family. So it's a good day. Um, Before we go into executive session, I think that's where you're probably going now. Yeah. How do we do that? Because they're supposed to have a meet meeting right now. Well, so, my head. Yeah. Um, you just have to pay the bills <laughs> real quick, Jay. Yeah. We have to pay the bills. Executive session, when you come back out, they'll just have to take a recess, to come in, put it on the record that you come out of executive session, and then adjourn the meeting. Okay. 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 Pay the bills. Yeah, real quick. Pay, bills paid in March. Uh, expenditures five hundred ninety-three thousand four hundred forty-four dollars and fifty-four cents. Do I have a motion to go into executive I session? Motion. motion. I have a motion by Councilman Johnston, seconded by Second. Councilman Wheeler. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Any opposed? Mm. We have five yeas, zero so nays. Motion passes. And the meeting, uh, the, sit, the city council meeting is, oh, there you are. Thank you. Is back in session. I believe we're ready to adjourn. Do I have a motion? Motion. I have a motion by Councilman Hewitt, seconded by? Second. Councilman Johnston, all in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Any opposed? We have five yeas, zero nays. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.